Welcome. Today we're going to discuss the technique of reversing mace, its execution, some of the things you should know about its execution, and ways to enhance it or make it more effective. So let's start with the ideal face, which is a left straight punch to the face. So typically we can start our techniques from a non-ready position or a ready position. This is one of the ones where we start from a ready position. So for whatever reason, we're already arguing, I've already squared up, but not only that, I'm going to start doing what's called framing. So if I face you guys for a second, I want to look like I'm in a picture frame. So see the picture frame? So this is my frame, which is inviting the opponent to take a look at this and go, oh yeah, I can definitely hit that big opening he left, right? So we're baiting them into throwing that punch. Almost like I'm going, mm, sticking my tongue out and then having them hit you, kind of one of those things. So I get in my stance, I do the frame, he falls for it. So what I want to do is an inward parry with the right, but remember, keep the rule uh, when we're blocking outside the arm, we want to be at or above the elbow. So that's what the left hand does with the outward parry. So the next thing we're going to talk about is what we're doing with our foot, which is actually called going up the circle. So if you notice from here, my hand could barely touch him. I mean, so I'll back up a little bit. I can't touch him from here at full extension. When I go up the circle and I move my foot, if you notice my shoulder now engaged where I can now reach him. It's because my arm grew longer. No, it's because my shoulder got closer. Right, so that's what going up the circle means. If you notice where my shoulder is in relationship to you guys right now, when I go up the circle, it's shifted. Now that gives me that extra reach. So we're gonna end up hitting the floating rib here on this angle. So the idea here is as I do my parry, my outward parry, I'm gonna step, then I'm gonna settle and do a counter rotational torque as I deliver the back knuckle. And that gives me the proper alignment. So if you notice, everything is lined up to deliver that strike. So let's take that one more time from the front. He comes in with the punch, and I hit, and I settle, and I rotate into the back knuckle. So keep in mind what's happening with the left hand. I'm staying at or above the elbow, because if I let this slide under, I'm going to be eating the elbow. So to compensate for that, you could turn this into a grab, potentially try to do a third arm, but you don't have to. This works just as easily with just getting the hit and the back knuckle, and then immediately pick up the check with the right. So let's talk about the final maneuver, which would be the downward looping roundhouse kick. So the idea here is I want a complementary angle. So if you notice the way his leg is bent, this is the angle that I want to take because that's the effect that I want. I want his knee to hit the floor. I don't necessarily want to hurt him with the leg. So I'm not trying to just kick his leg and have him go with it. I'm trying to get the knee to the floor. So the idea is I'm going to come down at that 45, getting his leg to buckle to the floor. And then from here, you would cover out if you choose or do other things if you wanted to do other things. So one more time, I start from a framing position, we're ready, inward parry, outward parry, counter rotational torque, going up the circle to engage the shoulder and the alignments, pick up the check, downward looping roundhouse kick to the back of the leg, and then cover out if you choose. We're going to do it a little bit quicker without the explanation, and then cover out. We hope this video helps you. Thank you very much.